and welcome to What to Click Tech Tips for Authors. Today, I'm going to teach you how to start your own podcast. This is by far the easiest thing I've ever done. It's easier than creating a YouTube channel, uh, trying to start a Pinterest account or create boards. It's easier than Instagram, TikTok, all of those put together. Podcasts are by far the easiest and it's 100% free. So, I'm going to show you how to do that today. I have a quick start guide for you that is in the description or in the show notes. It's free. You can download it. It has all of my equipment, a checklist for you to go through on how to get going. So as you can see, this is Apple Podcasts, and this is for podcasters. So these are the four podcasts I have, What to Click. I have the Cozy Mystery Mingle. I also have my plan with me for Pretty Fabulous. And then Molly and I have the plot with us, Cozy Mystery. Now, Back in the old days, people used to have also Google Podcasts. That used to be the number one place to find podcasts, including Apple. But that is going away, and it said it's being replaced by YouTube Podcasts. So what's happening is what you want to do is you take your YouTube channel, you create a playlist, and then you just designate it as a podcast. It's literally that easy. Like when I said this was easy, it's super easy. So let's go ahead and talk about what exactly... Uh, should you do with your podcast? Like what kind of, what can you talk about? That might be like the first place to start if you're just thinking like, what can I do? So if you look at all of my podcasts, um, the ones that I chose on what to click, I really just, I love genuinely talking about tech and trying out new tools and testing things out and showing people how to use them. Like this to me is fun. So that's why I did that. And it could also help other authors. So that's why I created that podcast. The next one, The Cozy Mystery Mingle, I literally just wanted to meet other authors. And because of my recent panic disorder, I've had agoraphobia and I just haven't been able to leave the house. Um, and so I still wanted to talk to people in network. And so I thought, what a great way for me to just take my platform that I already have, which is my YouTube channel that has 10,000 uh, subscribers and just share that with other authors so they can talk about their new cozy mystery releases. And then that also helps readers as well. So it was kind of like a triple win for everybody. Like readers got to find out about new releases, which they always love. And authors got to share information about their new upcoming book. And I got to meet other authors and help my own audience. So this was to me, again, something I did just because I loved doing it. The second one, the plan with me, pretty fabulous. I already do the plan with me's every month. And this was something where someone asked, oh, you know, I, I just want to listen to it. And they told me, and I thought that was kind of funny. They're like, oh, I listened to your podcast. And I was like, that's so weird. I don't have a podcast. But this person was just listening without actually watching any of the video. And so I thought, well, you know, why don't I just go ahead and make that a podcast? And so that's what I did. And then the last one is Molly and I talked about, wanted to talk about plotting. And, you know, we thought, well, maybe since I'm doing all these other podcasts, why don't we go ahead and just make ours a podcast format, like one available sort of way to listen to us and see how that works out too. So that's how all of these podcasts came about. So when you are thinking about what you want to do, just think about something you actually love doing uh, because it does take up a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot of time, but it does take up a significant amount of extra time that you're probably not spending right now, obviously, if you do not have a podcast. So think about something that you would enjoy working on. Uh, and honestly, you know, even though they can't see your face, people can kind of tell if you're excited about talking about this topic or it's really like a drain on your energy. Uh, the second thing you need to do is come up with a name. And I wouldn't put too much effort into this. I know there's a ton of different things out there on like coming up with the perfect name. But quite honestly, when people are looking through and browsing on Apple for podcasts, they're gonna log probably into Apple Podcasts and they're gonna see anything that they've already subscribed to, some suggestions that Apple has given to them. And as you can see, even though these people all have names for their podcasts, they're, it says mental health, alternative health, marketing, marketing, entrepreneur. It instantly will just tell you what that subject area is. It'll tell you popular shows, what we're loving. And then if you go to browse, if you're just trying to look on your own, again, it's mostly just this podcast sort of four by four cover, the square cover that's going to kind of draw people in. So I wouldn't worry too much. In fact, I wouldn't worry at all about the name of your podcast. And just so you know, the name of my podcast, The Mystery Mingle, is used by like, I think, three other people. So 
Whatevs. Once you do that, I want you to head over to Canva. Now it's going to be free, so don't worry. I said everything was free. And you're going to type in podcast cover under templates. And you're just going to pick one and go with it because it really doesn't matter. You can change it later when you get more branded. They actually have a lot of cute little things in here. And that's actually how I, even though I am a graphic designer, chose my photo for all of my podcast covers because I really just don't want to give it too much thought. I do think anything though with a person on it, it doesn't matter if it's your headshot, a full body, anything that has an actual face, hands, leg, it doesn't matter, always draws the eye more quickly than something that is just kind of generic like this. So if you can, just go ahead and try to pick one that has a photo in it. So inside of here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick. So I'm gonna pick this one, because why not? And I'll just say customize this template. And I obviously am not this person, so I'm gonna get rid of her. So let's go ahead and delete her photo. And I'm gonna upload one of my photos over here. And to upload a photo, all you have to do is drag and drop if you've never used Canva before. And I'm gonna resize myself. So I'm taking up most of the space over here. And also I'm going to probably get rid of the background. So if I double click this and I click edit photo, um, I can do what's called BG remover and it will just magically delete everything behind me. How easy was that? All right, so now I'm over here. I'm actually not a fan of this like color scheme that's going on here. So I'm probably gonna change this. Purple is my favorite color. I don't know if that's really the color that I want um, or if it's really that important for this. But if I double click this, I can also choose one of these gradients below. I have that for one of my others. Uh, I could do this gradient. I can create my own gradient. I know. There's nothing worse than when a designer gets in charge of trying to make their own design because they just go a little crazy. So maybe we'll just go with a gray background. So here's my final design. All I'm gonna do is go ahead, download this, and I'm gonna download it as a JPEG so it just takes up less space. Uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and pick a platform to host my podcast on. Now, you have many choices. I know that Buzzsprout was made famous by some other guy who talks about podcasts a lot. Um, you do not have to pay. And I don't think you should pay for a podcast, which is odd because I am very much a proponent of paying for value when you can actually get something of high quality. And I believe that all of these are, I wouldn't say low quality, but just unnecessary. So your podcast is not at all 100%, I guarantee, not going to grow because you paid for Buzzsprout. Nobody goes to Buzzsprout looking for a podcast. They go to Apple looking for a podcast. So you're gonna use Spotify for podcasters. So I'm logged in, um, maybe if I log out, it'll, I don't even know if it'll let me do that. But if you, oh, you know what? I can do an incognito browser and we'll look for Spotify for podcasters. So I'm gonna show you how to sign up. There it is, Spotify for podcasters. So it's gonna tell you all these things, how great it is, all the resources it has. First of all, it's Spotify. I'm not gonna say everybody uses Spotify, but a lot of people do, enough people do, that you don't even have to then create a podcast on Spotify. It's already there, it uploads it for you, it's automatic. And that's where I get the majority of my listens from. So when you go over here to sign up, you're going to say, I want to start a podcast. This over here where it says I have a podcast, that means it's because you are someone who has already signed up for this service through Buzzsprout or some other like paid service. That's not you you're starting from scratch, you'll say, I want to start a podcast. Now, you, if personally, you as a person, if you listen to Spotify, you can log in with your Spotify account, and that's what I do. And then when you log in, you're gonna sign up for Spotify. So let's go back to my account um, so I can show you. Once you're inside, uh, you are going to see all of your different podcasts. So you can see over here, podcasts, so if I go to start a new podcast, I should be hopefully wherever you are in your podcast journey. So we're gonna call this uh, digital planning. Digital planning. Uh, digital planning or digital planners? I don't remember. Uh, digital planning. Uh, and then over here, what's your podcast about? Um, 
learn all about how to do digital planning with your iPad Pro, your Samsung Galaxy tablet, or your computer. As long as, oops, as long as it's digital and paperless, then I got you covered. I don't know what that means. Uh, learn, let's check out all of the latest digital planners on Etsy and elsewhere. And also figure out how to connect your digital planner to your Google Calendar. There we go. All right, who's the host? That is me. I'm just going to say myself, Lisa Seifert. You can say anything else you want to say. Uh, as for a category, this is a, is it design? I don't know if it's design, it's business. Uh, it's definitely not any of these. Education, I guess it's a how-to. I'm going to go with how-to. All right. Uh, choose a language. You are in, well, I'm in English. I'm not sure what you're in. <laughs> United States. I know. Who knew that there were so many different English uh, types? All right. So now we can upload our cover art. Aren't you glad we did that first? So I'm going to select this from my downloads. There we go. And I'm going to say next. Okay. Make your first episode. Great. Let's do it. Now, when they say let's do it, basically what they're saying is upload a file. So you have a few different choices. If you have an audio only file, you can upload an MP3, an M4A, a WAV, or an MPG. If you are doing a video file, you can upload an MP4 or an MOV file. So we're just gonna go ahead and upload a video here that I already had recorded from somewhere else. It's how to open up a digital planner on an iPad. So this tutorial, how to open a digital planner on a Samsung, so it's on an iPad, I don't know why I said that, Samsung uh, Galaxy tablet, Android. So uh, what does your audience need to know? I don't know how important, in fact, I don't think they're very important at all, the show notes. Um, most people just kind of open things, maybe take a quick, brief look at this, but I'm going to go ahead and copy what I already had, which was, let's learn how to open a digital planner. Um, I'm going to put this over here. And then I'm going to say, publish it now. And then does it have explicit content? No, it has no promotional content. It'd be great if I had a sponsor for this podcast, which I have not even started. Uh, I do not. And then it's a full episode. It is season one episode one. And then this is a default for just what your uh, podcast cover image is. We're going to change this and I am just going to upload, actually, yep, I'm going to upload this, which is just a square image of me holding the uh, digital tablet. Now, not every single video needs to have a its own square image. I personally like to create them. They're very easy to do in Canva. I don't see any reason why not, um, just to make each episode look different. Now here, you can ask, this is all already defaulted. You can ask people what they thought of the episode. Um, I just leave this up here. I actually get very little interaction, but you can ask a question too. Um, what is your favorite tablet? And I will put Samsung. Uh, Ultra. And then I think it's the S9 is the latest one. Or I will put uh, the iPad, iPad mini. I can add another I option for the iPad Pro. Uh, we can add another option for, I don't even know what else is out there. Um, something else. 
<laughs> and then I'm going to select this so people can have multiple options. This start and end, I just leave it as a default. It's for the week and I create the poll. And after this, I'm going to say next and I'm going to go ahead and say publish. And that's it. You're done. So you can go ahead. It'll automatically let you share a link to your episode out on your Facebook or I think you saw it does Twitter or you can just copy that link and put it anywhere you want. Now, alternatively, um, what you can do is you could copy that link and then you could have another service that does it somewhere else. But uh, I mean, you can go over here to the three dots and say copy public link to episode as well. Now, over here under settings, we're going to go to podcast settings. So this is if I afterwards decide, hey, there's something I want to change. This isn't really what I wanted or anything that we did before. You can make any of those changes right here. Now here you can also put in your website. So I'm going to go ahead and put in pretty fabulous designs dot com and my Instagram is pretty fabulous designs and I'm pretty sure that's the name for my YouTube as well and for my Facebook and I don't use Twitter so I can go ahead and save all of this and then over here under podcast availability this is where you're going to take your podcast and now we're going to put it out on Apple iHeartRadio or wherever else you want to put it. So over here under Apple Music, uh, well, Apple Music, do I do Apple Music? I can't remember. But the first thing you want to do is where it says RSS distribution, you want to click enable. So by enabling this, this is the URL you're going to copy here to post it onto other places. Don't worry if you're like, oh my God, I can't believe you're sharing. I'm going to delete this whole podcast after this tutorial. Um, but over here under Apple Podcasts, what you're going to do is you're going to say, click Apple Podcasts Connect. And once you click Apple Podcasts Connect, you have this little plus button here. And you're going to say, I have a new show. It's not a new channel. It's a new show. Uh, all of these down here are all channel, chan shows, but they're on my same channel. Um, so over here, we're going to say new show, add a show with an RSS feed, which we just enabled. So we have that. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to copy this RSS feed that you see here. Um, and then we are going to paste this over here. We are going to click add. And now Apple Podcast knows where to grab that show. Um, this show does not contain third party content. Uh, show contact. Now you're going to have to put all of your own information. You're going to have to make sure your email address lines up with the email address that is inside of here. The reason you need to do that is because Apple will verify your podcast matches the email address over on Spotify, which is the originating sort of host of your podcast. If those emails do not match, you will not be able to get into Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio, really you can't get into anything. Uh, this email address is really important to make sure it's consistent from each platform to each platform. Um, and then you are going to go ahead and you're gonna say, so over here you can go to availability. I would just leave all of these defaults right here as is. Um, subscription, you don't have enough listeners yet to have any subscriber only uh, type of content, so I wouldn't worry about that. Ratings and reviews, it's always great to get ratings and reviews. I really wouldn't worry about that right now. And then you can see all of your episodes. You don't need to ever, 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 ever click this button, add an episode, because they're going to auto-populate for you by Spotify. Remember, Spotify is your host, so everything that's in there will then just be distributed out to everybody using that RSS feed. So if I go back to my show, you can see it says draft. As soon as it kind of does whatever it needs to do in the back end, see it says we're still processing your show details. Once it's done processing that, which I said is make sure your email address here lines up to what is on Spotify, then this button over here will change from save to publish. And then you click publish and then you have an Apple podcast. That's, as e that's It's so easy. Once you have that Apple podcast, you're going to actually paste that URL back over here and say add to profile. And that way in your profile, when you go into, and so when I'm inside my own profile page, uh, you'll see that there are links for Am Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and then just the regular RSS feed. So 
The way you get all of those links on there is from that availability page, which I'm going to show you again. So down here, every time you add a URL, it's going to be added to that profile page that you saw. And then when you ask people where you are, you can just show them that profile page. Now, Google Podcast, I want you to ignore this. Google Podcast is going away very soon, if not already. So this is just an archive. I don't know why they haven't gotten rid of that. I will show you how to load Google Podcast. Um, the next one I always do is I radio it works exactly the same way you're going to head over to that portal and you're going to click submit your podcast and then once there you're going to make sure you're logged in and then i've already have an account over here on iHeartRadio. i'm going to add my podcast and right here is where i'm going to add that rss feed that was over here at the top the rss distribution you're going to copy that now, the other ones down here, I really haven't done, um, I think public radio, I got a note the other day, I tried to do this one, they are out of business, they shut down the entire site. I've never heard of these two, um, I haven't heard of CastBox, so again, Apple Music might be the only one that's worth doing, uh, and the rest of them, I would just say forget it. Now, Google Podcasts, again, is now YouTube Podcasts, so I'll show you how to do that. So one, you need a YouTube channel, so if you don't know how to do that, you have to get a YouTube channel set up. But once you have a channel set up, all you have to do is take any of your videos. So let's say I wanna take my iPad related videos. So I'm gonna to go to any of these videos and down here at the bottom where it says playlists, all I have to do is add, see how it has podcasts, is add a new playlist. So I'll say new podcast down here at the bottom and I will call this digital planning. And I will say whatever I want to say, a uh, podcast about how to use digital planners on your iPad and Samsung Ultra S8 tablet. And I'm going to make sure that this is public. It's not like private or anything like that. And I'm going to upload that same square picture that I had from before. There we go. And I'm going to say create and I'll say save and I'm done. It's literally that easy. I now have a digital, a Google podcast, which is now YouTube podcast. Uh, so where do I find my podcast inside of my YouTube channel? If I head over here to the back and I go to, I'll have a new tab now at the top that says podcast. Now I can see I have a digital planning podcast and my plan with me podcast. All they are are playlists. So you just take any video anywhere and then you make it an actual podcast. So how do you actually create content, right? How did I make this video podcast? There's a couple different ways you can do it. I really like Wave Video. So Wave Video, so Wave Video Pricing. Uh, so the reason I have Wave Video is because I paid a one-time fee to use this forever and ever. Um, it never lets me down. It always works. I have no technical issues. That is really the only problem I've ever had with Restream, Crowdcast. I used to love all of those. I had so many issues. Um, so this is really easy. StreamYard, again, is also very easy and it's free. Uh, StreamYard is free to start out. And especially if you're starting out, you probably don't really need a lot of recordings. It's not a big deal. So StreamYard is super easy to use. So let's say I wanted to just do a recording. So you can do a live stream, which will stream out to a YouTube channel. Um, or Facebook or anywhere else. Uh, you can do a webinar, but you do have to pay extra for that. Or you can record it in the studio. So we're just gonna say recording and we're gonna say test recording or podcast. And we are gonna say create recording. And it's going to go ahead and start up for you. And then all you have to do is select a mic over here under settings. So you can select a camera, you can select a mic, um, and then camera resolution, you can have high def. And for audio over here, you can choose the mic, you can choose the speaker. I like to turn on echo cancellation, uh, reduce mic background noise. I guess that's new. I don't see how it could hurt. Um, everything else I would just kind of leave as is. And then go ahead, enter the studio. And then you're going to add yourself to the stage. So now you're on the stage uh, and then you are going to go ahead and you can record. Now, there's a couple different things you can do. So over here, you can see I can have people I could it, like invite to be interviewees. So to invite someone, you just click the invite. This is a private link for them. You copy this, you paste it, you send it out to them. 
it's that easy. Um, over here, if you wanted to add some slides, if I wanted to present something, I could go ahead and share slides. I could, I have some slides uploaded, I guess, already from before. Um, so I can kind of position myself however I want. Uh, there's a couple different formats. And then I could also present, if I wanted to share, I could also share the Chrome tab. I could share an entire window. I can share entire screens. So it's really like, honestly, the easiest way to create anything. And I always say, why not just create a video podcast? Because not only does Spotify have video now on it, as you saw, YouTube obviously is video and that is going to replace Google Podcasts. These are super easy to create. You can add slides, you can share a screen, do a tutorial, you can just talk like this, you can have people that you interview. This to me is the best way to record any of your videos. Now, I hear a lot of people doing editing. You don't really know how to need how to need to know how to do editing. Everything I do is a live stream, so the first take is the final take, right? So that to me is good enough. If you want to get into editing, you could. I would say just do a better job of just doing it perfect the first time. Um, now, you can always hit stop, re-record, and do that, and I do that a lot too. Um, if you are worried about audio, there is a free way for you to clean up your audio. So Adobe Podcast will clean up your audio for free. Yeah, that's right, you heard me right. It will do it for free, so you don't have to pay for it. So I'm gonna show you some really bad audio. All right, here's my really bad audio. So I'm gonna try to make a recording with a lot of bad audio sounds going on in the background. <laughs> and then we're gonna try to clean it up. Okay, so I took this file, I uploaded it here to Apple Podcasts again for free, and I asked it to enhance the speech. And now if you listen to it. So I'm gonna try to make a recording with a lot of bad audio sounds going on in the background. And then we're gonna try to clean it up. So it pretty much took away all of that random pounding and clapping that I was doing. It will do the same for you too. If you have audio, maybe there's a plane flying by, a train, a car horn honking, your dog barks, it doesn't matter. It will figure it out because it knows the main voice that's speaking and it will clean it up and it will do it free. And then all you have to do is download that file and now you've cleaned up your audio instead of watching a million videos on how to use some really complicated software and listen to learn all about different uh, sound levels and frequencies and all of that. So that's my advice for editing. I think, you know, honestly, editing anything uh, at a high level quality, I think just the amount of effort required is just not there for how much extra you're going to get. I know a lot of people complain about audio, uh, but you just don't need it. Now, as far as equipment, um, I will say the only equipment that I have is I have my mic and I have my camera and that's it. And the only reason I have a really expensive fancy mic is because I thought I was going to record my own audiobooks and I never did. So you don't even need that fancy of a mic. My Newman mic was $1,100. It's a condenser mic and it has a separate XLR. I will leave all of that information in case that's something you want to purchase. My camera is a Logitech Brio and that's only because I have those Apple XDR monitors, those uh, really big ones and they don't have a camera built in, a webcam built into them. I do have a Sony camera that I use for my interviews uh, and that is uh, I think it was like 4,400 when I got it. And then the lens was like another 2,000. So I will leave you information on that too, if that's something you feel like you want to use. But you definitely don't need that when you're starting out. Your built-in mic and uh, webcam in your phone will work just fine. I mean, when I first started out uh, my YouTube channel back in 2015, I was just using my iMac which was old at that time. It was like a 20, I think 11 or 2012. And I was using the built-in webcam and the built-in mic and everything was just fine. And my YouTube channel now has over 50,000 subscribers. So you do not need to get all fancy with the equipment. It's more important just to put content out there. So same thing with podcasts. Mine are not perfect. Uh, they are probably not even optimized. Like a professional podcaster is probably mortified at you know, me just putting stuff out there, but that's kind of what I do. Now, if you want to do an interview style podcast, 
you can definitely schedule that. You don't even need fancy scheduling tools. I don't even use a scheduling tool, even though I do like one or two podcasts a week. I just email people and I'm like, hey, when do you want to do it? I don't know that that's the most efficient way, but right now it is the easiest way for me and it helps me to control my schedule and to talk with other people, especially people that don't, you know, you gotta have to keep your audience in mind because I will say every time I schedule something with an author who is usually, I would say not tech savvy, but probably not a live YouTuber or podcaster or whatever, they're like, oh, let me like fix out some time so we'll just work it out via email. When I message people for Pretty Fabulous and I ask them when they would like to do be on my podcast, they're like, okay, send me a scheduling link because those are online businesses and they're all about efficiency. So again, if you are going to be interviewing people in that caliber, like my Pretty Fabulous, where they are online businesses, then yeah, have a scheduling link. For everybody else, you know, they probably don't even care. You can just work out some times and dates and they'll get back to you with what works for them. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, I put all of this and more details into my podcast starter guide. It is so, so super easy and it's a great opportunity for you to not only get more content out there, possibly meet more people like I did with mine. Um, you could also help other people and it could just be something fun as a nice little break from writing or reading if you're a reader. This works too if you are a booktuber. So uh, anyways, let me know what you think if you have any questions at all because it is so super easy. I promise 100% I will help you. Just send me a message and I will reply. And I hope everyone's having a wonderful and fabulous day. And I will see you later. Bye.